We're going to go ahead and recap a little bit of what we talked about yesterday. So yesterday we talked about exponential and linear population growth. So we said linear looks like a line and exponential looks like a curve. But what really happens in nature is that typically these populations level off. So they follow this kind of S-shaped pattern, which is known as logistic growth. And at the top here, we get the carrying capacity. So we're just going to do a little warm up here first. What is the carrying capacity of graph A? So over here on graph A, what is that carrying capacity? So if you look, we should get right around 250, okay? So notice the population can fluctuate. That's okay. Some years there might be more predators. Some years there might be fewer predators or more food. It fluctuates, but it hovers around this carrying capacity of 250. What about graph B? There are two carrying capacities. So for graph B, we have 200 as one of the carrying capacities and 100. So it's important to look and to remember that carrying capacities can be different depending on the year. So what do you think could have caused this carrying capacity to be lower in these years? We could have had something to do with weather. Maybe there was a flood that wiped out a whole bunch of organisms. Maybe there were more predators. Maybe there was a drought. So any kind of those factors are going to influence the carrying capacity. So carrying capacity doesn't have to stay the same. So today we are going to go ahead and talk about what limits populations. So let me just get back to the right page here. All right, here we go. So what limits population growth? So different things limit population growth. Um, populations can only grow when there are certain things present in their environment. So first of all, Food, water, sunlight, habitat, so resources. Resources limit population growth. If there aren't enough resources, then our population can't grow to be as big as maybe it could be if there were unlimited resources. Just think about if, let's say with humans, okay, there wasn't enough food around. Well, our population wouldn't grow because some, or, some of us would end up starving Okay, so our population might stay the same, it might decrease, but it's not going to grow unless we have an adequate amount of everything, okay, of our resources. Bacteria are oftentimes limited by their space or their habitat. So when bacteria are growing in little plates in the lab, they stop growing once they have filled up that entire container. Same thing with really territorial animals like lions. Lions have really big territories, so they will not settle in an area that has another lion in it. So there has to be enough habitat for that population to grow. Predators. So if we have a lot of predators, we are not going to experience very much population growth because the predators are going to be eating their prey and therefore the population of the prey is going to remain relatively stable or it's going to decrease, okay? Disease, so spreading of disease can limit population growth. That's why you see lots of people getting all freaked out about um, you know, Ebola or the Zika virus. Disease limits populations, okay? Some individuals might end up dying from disease. And then lastly, unusual weather. So if there's a drought, maybe there's less food. So then the animals do not have as much food, and so they can't adequately grow their population. Floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, anything like that. Um, it even could be warmer temperatures. Some organisms, like coral, are really sensitive to temperature. So if the temperature of the ocean rises too much, they will actually end up dying. So these characteristics, these things that limit population growth, we can put them into two categories, okay? Two different categories. And the first one is called density dependent, and the second category is density independent. 
And so these are two categories that we put these limiting factors into. So density dependent factor. If it's dependent, it depends on density. We talked about density. Density is just the number of organisms divided by the area, okay? I always use the example, if I have 100 fish in the ocean or 100 fish in a bathtub, which one is more dense? Well, the 100 fish in the bathtub, right? Because they're in a smaller area. So density has to do with how many organisms are in a specific area. So a density dependent factor is a factor that limits population growth, but it depends on the size of the population. Typically, this type of factor has more of an influence when we have a bigger population. So how does this work? Well, let's look at the first example here, competition, okay? So with competition, let's say that um, I place a bowl of candy in the middle of the cafeteria, okay? And there are 100 students in there for lunchtime. What's gonna happen? there's going to be a lot of competition, okay? So because our population is big, we have 100 people in the uh, cafeteria, there's gonna be lots and lots of competition, all right? Whereas if I put that bowl in the middle of the cafeteria and there's only one or two people, there's not gonna be as much competition, okay? So the amount of competition depends on how great the density is or how big the population is. With disease, think about it. If we have 100 people in a room, all tightly packed together, and one person has the flu, how fast do you think that flu is gonna spread? Pretty fast, right? Now, if I just have one or two people in that room, it's probably not going to spread as fast, okay? So when we get big populations, diseases spread a lot quicker, okay? And then predation, so predators and prey. When the predators, eat more prey, the prey population goes down, okay? And then because the prey population goes down, there's less food, so then there's fewer predators. So they influence the size of each other's populations. So these factors limit populations and they have more of an influence when we have bigger populations. That's what density dependent means. Density independent factor is a limiting factor that doesn't depend on population size. Okay, it's independent of the density or of the population. So severe weather, natural disasters, temperature. So let's think about severe weather. Uh, perhaps there's a tornado, okay? Well, it doesn't matter if there are 100 sheep in a pasture or if there's five sheep in a pasture. That tornado is going to affect those sheep the same, okay? If the tornado goes by them, they're going, we're gonna have a sheep tornado, all right? So Tornadoes don't pick, they don't decide which sheep they're going to kill or, oh, this is a bigger population, so we're gonna affect it more, okay? The tornadoes, natural disasters, severe weather, all right, it's all independent of density. It doesn't matter how dense the population is, it's still going to affect them. Same thing with temperature, okay? Maybe it gets really hot one year and the plants uh, in your garden can't survive. Okay, well, it doesn't matter how many plants you have, okay, temperature is not going to influence, it's not going to be any different. If you have a lot of plants or a little plants, the plants are still going to die, okay? So density independent factor doesn't depend on population size or density, okay?